In this video, we're going to look at function return values, continuing my course on JavaScript and Node.js for complete beginners. So in the last video, we took a look at function parameters and passing arguments to functions. Now we're going to look at getting values out of functions with return values. Let's create a new file here and call it function, I don't know, I'll just call it return.js actually for the moment. Okay, so start with use strict. Supposing we want to create a function that lets us pass a value in and get a value out of it. So we've seen that functions are basically collections of statements which we can call, or in other words, call to ex cause to execute whenever we want. But we can also pass values to them whether those are strings, arrays, whatever they are, um, numbers. And here we're going to look at getting values out of functions again. Let's create a function. I'm going to call this square. So um, if I just put for the moment console.log square, that, does, that defines a function. And to actually make the function run, we have to write square and we can run it wherever we want um, here in our program. Now let's write node return.js to actually run the program and it says square. So we can pass a value to it if we want. Let's, let's create a function that allows us to pass in a single argument. I'm going to call this number and we're going to pass in seven. Uh, as the argument. This is a parameter, remember? It's a function parameter, and we're going to pass 7 uh, as, an, as an argument to the function. So 7 is going to end up in this parameter, and we can output it if we want. Let's write number there. This is like a variable, basically. And if I run this, we see it says square 7. Um, now we... Whoa, what happened there? Let's just close that. I don't know what happened. So now we can also get values out of functions. Imagine that we want this function to square this number. In other words, multiply it by itself. We can do that like this. So let's get rid of this console.log and write return. So we need, we need the return keyword here. And then we type what we're going to return. So um, actually, let's calculate that first. Let's write let square equal number times number. So just squaring the number or multiplying it by itself, in other words. And then um, to actually return a value, we write, we write the value that we want to return. This could be a string or a number or anything. And how do we actually get that? Well, when we call the function, it, it effectively it kind of returns a variable so we write let let's call it value value equal square seven and then I'll output here value and if we run that it says 49 which is seven times seven we could write this more succinctly because uh, we don't we don't really need to have two statements here we could just say return number times number. We could put here return number times number and that would do the trick. But I've just written it out a bit more in a bit more of a complicated way here just to kind of highlight the fact that we could we could have all sorts of calculations or all kinds of processing here. We could be doing all kinds of things. Who knows? Opening files, reading them. Who knows? But uh, at some point in the function, um, well, at the end, in this case, we return some result of all our processing or calculations, and we can get it like this. So it's as if this, this function is sort of, um, you know, to, to go back to my sort of shoot analogy from the, from a, the last video, sort of throwing seven down a shoot here, and it's emerging here, and it's getting put into this variable. And here we're kind of don't really know how this fits with my analogy, but we're, um, we're kind of returning or spitting out uh, this value square 
And when we actually call the function, when we actually execute it, um, we can say let value equals square or let whatever we want equals square. And then we get the actual value that we've returned. So this uh, can look confusing because it looks as though we're getting a variable and we're setting it equal to a function. That's not what is happening. What is happening here is that we are declaring a variable and setting it equal to the return value of a function, which happens to be, in this case, a number. So, as always, the thing to do is type this out, practice it a bit yourself. Let's take another example here. I'll maybe get rid of this blank line. Let's go down and create another function. So, supposing we want to create a function that returns a greeting. Let's write function, I'll call it greet. Do we want to pass it any arguments? Well, we could pass in, for example, a name. So let's just write name there. And, uh, and again, this is just like value and like, um, yeah, like value and like number. This is just a variable name that I've made up. Could be anything within reason. And let's create a string here. Let's say let uh, greeting. We don't want to, we wouldn't want to say here let greet equal. We don't want to get confused by using the function name for a variable. Give it a different name. Let's say let greeting equal. And we'll have a string, hello. And let's add on to that name. Um, this isn't ideal, as we'll see in a, in a second, uh, but we'll leave it for that f for the minute. And then, what shall, we, what shall we return from the function? Let's return this greeting. So I'm going to say here, return greeting. Let's call this function. So I need to say, if I just write greet and then pass it a name, like Neptune, perfectly reasonable name, and run this. It doesn't do anything apart from what I've already told it to do above. Um, but I, I can now get the return value of the function. So this function, it's not outputting anything directly. Uh, it's, it is only returning something. So when we, when we talk about returning a value in programming, we mean a very specific thing. We don't mean that we're uh, for example, printing the value, like displaying it on the console, we mean we've got this return keyword and we're actually returning a value from a function. So to access that value, I need a variable. Um, well, we could actually just write... Con well, I don't mean to do that. Let's do control Z, undo, undo. There we go, right. We could actually do this, console.log. And this would this would actually... Um, use console.log to output the return value of this function. Let's try it. So it says, hello, Neptune. You can see that this is not ideal because hello is run together with Neptune. What we need to do is, is have a space after hello. Um, so I can put that inside the quotes like that. And then it looks a lot better. So now we've got hello, Neptune. Um, but uh, perhaps more often, we would be storing the return value of, of a function in a variable and then using it further in our program. So let's write let, um, I'll call this greeting again. Let greeting equals greet and we pass the argument Neptune. And let's write console.log greeting. And I run that and it outputs hello Neptune. Now in this case, the variable name happens to have the same name as what we were what we were as the variable we, we were returning. But this is an entirely different variable to this one here. This variable, um, because it's declared inside these curly brackets, is we can only access it actually within the curly brackets. This is an entirely different variable. So I couldn't write two lots of let greeting here. Let's set that equal to something. Let's see what that does. 
That gives us an error. It tells me that identify a greeting has already been declared. But um, here, we say that the scope of this variable is restricted to this code block. It's not visible outside this code block. That's why I'm able to declare another variable with the name greeting here outside the code block where this one is no longer visible. And there's no reason why this has to have the same name as this. There's no connection between them other than that this is being used to get the return value of this function. So I could call it something else. Let's write message. And we'll run this. And if any of this seems unclear to you, it will become clearer with practice. You do just need to practice this. It's like learning a musical instrument. Watching videos is not enough. You've got to actually do it yourself. The video is only a source of information to guide your practice. So it says, hello, Neptune. Okay, we'll leave it there for this video, I think. Maybe one last thing. Um, uh, by the way, if, if you've got a function that returns a value, you don't have to pass it any arguments. Um, you could happily have a function that accepts no arguments and returns a value. Those are two separate things altogether. If you wanted to really quickly square a number, you don't actually need a function to do it. So you could just write, let's write console.log. And math.pow, short for power, 7 to the power of 2. In other words, 7 squared. And that would give us 49 again. Let's maybe pick a different number, like 8. It should be 64. There we go. Um, so if you look at this, this is actually calling a function and passing it two arguments. In this case, the function is part of what we call the math class. We haven't looked at classes yet. We'll be looking at them later on. But um, by looking at functions, we've taken a step, a big step towards actually understanding what's going on here. Okay, so do try this out for yourself. Don't forget, you can find my Git repository uh, by going to github.com slash cave of programming. That's all one word, lowercase. And until next time, happy coding.